want to thank the Oris House of Architecture for the invitation to speak about the new European Bauhaus at this year's edition of uh, the festival to spring with Oris. It is in fact a great honor to participate in this event, even more so as this year's edition highlights successful and inspiring women architects and artists. I'm very glad to be with you. For more than 20 years, the Oris Festival has been giving important impulses to the design, art and architecture communities. Oris has been the main driver behind the rethinking of architecture and its influence on society. This is where I see a natural link with the new European Bauhaus initiative. In fact, the new European Bauhaus was announced by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, in a State of Union speech at the European Parliament last September. We are very pleased with the interest and involvement of many people and organizations across Europe and even globally in this new movement that the Commission started in a rather unusual way. It is a process that starts from the bottom up, welcoming fresh ideas, grassroots contributions, collectively creating the new European Bauhaus spirit and practice, hopefully. So what is the idea and ambition of the new European Bauhaus? Well, it is about discussing together how we live, our values, our common spaces of work and leisure, our collective and private experiences, and women have a lot of experience on that. It's about how we want to live together in the future while respecting and protecting our environment. It's about empowering those who are working on solutions for the climate crisis. It's about good life, about affordable and sustainable life, about bringing people together. And it's about matching sustainability with beauty. This is a project for all regions and all territories in Europe. It's not an elite kind of project. In promoting affordable solutions, it should contribute to social cohesion and to solving real housing problems. So it is a project with great ambition. We want to explore new ways of living and working together. If we want to bring real change around us for a more beautiful, sustainable life together, we need to think about how we can bring new ideas and implement them in the ways we live, we work in our communities, in our physical spaces, and in our minds. The new European Bauhaus is also looking at the Green Deal, the green transformation of Europe, from a different perspective. Not as a kind of technical issue or problem, but rather as an opportunity for rethinking and reshaping the places where we want to live. What can we do to turn this huge challenge into a positive experience for everybody? How can the necessary become beautiful? How can we benefit from this transformation? One way to do this is to connect people. For all of us to go beyond our usual silos, our boundaries, to bring together different perspectives, experiences, knowledge. The COVID crisis has shown that many topics are interlinked and that creative thinking comes from bridging and breaking up these silos, as, as, uh, just as the historical Bauhaus movement did 100 years ago. In a way, the new European Bauhaus is about reimagining the old and about rebuilding better in the aftermath of the pandemic. 100 years ago, the traditional Bauhaus motto was form follows function. Today, form needs to follow the planet. We need to design our living spaces, or rather redesign, the way we do things and peace with nature, with a strong commitment to inclusion in all its different forms. We need to work to integrate people, culture, nature, beauty, to embrace a truly multidisciplinary approach in shaping our future together. It is also, of course, 
for us in the European institutions an opportunity to reflect on how we work and how to deliver in a different way, which is why we strongly believe the new Bauhaus should be shaped in a co-creation process without a predefined framework, laying a blueprint together with all interested stakeholders, together with you, architects, with all of you who will participate in this festival dedicated to architecture. But as the new European Bauhaus is not just a project about buildings, it goes far beyond buildings. It, it is also about the spaces between buildings, about the places where we live and how we live in them. It is about how we experience places. It is also about our lifestyles. And the objective is to articulate in an innovative way three key dimensions. On one hand, sustainability, including the circular economy. The second one is aesthetics and quality in the places where we live. And the third one is inclusion, places that are accessible and affordable to all. Again, it's not an elite project. Where you connect those three dimensions, where you connect, in, you, you connect them, you are in the new European Bauhaus spirit. How are we going to develop this project? We are convinced that bouncing back from the pandemic, the sustainable and inclusive transformation of our societies requires more than courageous and wise public policies. It requires a profound change of perspective. And in this sense, a cultural project that brings hope for Europe. Such an ambition cannot be achieved without also a new approach, this new approach. In the normal way we do things, in the usual institutional process in the EU, the Commission makes a formal proposal outlining the how, the when, the who of the new action. Instead, this time round, also us are thinking out of the box. For the new European Bauhaus, we will follow the philosophy of co-design, true co-design. The Commission is in what one might call an active listening mode. In the first design phase, in order to define the concept with all the interested parties. This project is relying on our capacity to engage with citizens and with all those who can do and can contribute. We want to co-create and explore together what exactly the main focus of the new European Bauhaus should be. And this is also where we count on you, the creative minds in the architecture, design, arts, engineering, all those that want to contribute and can contribute. The new European Bauhaus wants to reach out to artists, to activists, to designers, of course, architects, students, scientists, engineers, practitioners, as much as to policymakers and citizens in general. Regional and local organizations, representatives of local communities, their insight is also most welcome and very valuable because theirs is an intimate, a personal perspective, a sustainability of inclusiveness and beauty of their places, of spaces where they live and work. And can women, can a woman, can women give special contributions in this process? I think they might. We would like to facilitate the exchange of knowledge, ideas, needs between these stakeholders to empower communities to create a true interdisciplinary project. So what we would like to know from you over the next couple of months is what sustainability, inclusion and aesthetics mean to you. What makes the quality of experience? What do you think the scope and priorities of the European Bauhaus should be? What kind of contemporary examples are already out there that can reflect the three 
core principles of the new European Bauhaus in an exemplary way? What are the biggest societal changes that the new European Bauhaus should tackle? This project is very ambitious, but we do not want to reinvent the wheel either. We know that there are already a lot of amazing examples of spaces and ideas for inclusive and harmonious ways of living. There are so many great ideas already out there. Let's bring them together to learn from them and move forward. So I also take the opportunity to submit your ideas, examples of the new European Bauhaus that already exist, bring them to us, or tell us how you want to get involved to contribute to this conversation. How can we move from ideas to concrete actions, from design to delivery? How can we create a support framework? The first thing we will do is to organize a new European Bauhaus Prize. We will launch a call in the coming months, be attentive, and you will have an opportunity to propose examples. The prizes will be awarded by the end of summer. The 2021 prizes will recognize and celebrate existing achievements. They will inspire us, illustrating the elements we want from the new European Bauhaus to achieve guiding us in developing the initiative from idea generation to concrete delivery. As the project matures, and as of uh, next year, 2022, prizes will be more future-oriented, rewarding emerging ideas and solutions in line with the new European Bauhaus credo. In parallel, we are also looking at how we can mobilize a number of European Union programs to finance and seed the development of projects that would be exemplary, the pilot projects that will be the first examples of the new European Bauhaus, pioneering what we hope will be many more in the years to come. There will be pilot examples, just to illustrate, just to contaminate in the positive sense. The success of the new European Bauhaus will reside, reside in our ability to converge current challenges, in particular climate change, into opportunities, converting one thing into another for improving the quality of our historic buildings, of cultural sites, public spaces with careful consideration of quality standards for environment protection, innovation, quality of life, and reinforcing the sense of local identity. Cohesion policy is obviously a natural partner in promoting convergence between economic, social, climate change objectives in our quest for better living, in transforming our spaces and our communities all over Europe. The new European Bauhaus is an initiative, in fact, for all regions and territories in Europe. While we do not have a predefined blueprint for the new European Bauhaus, as I just shared with you, but we know one thing. It is about breaking silos in every aspect of the way we live and do things, including European Union policies, where synergies between sector-specific and place-based initiatives are intertwined. With its strong place-based focus, cohesion policy covering objectives for a green, just and inclusive transition provides a well-established framework for sustainable urban development and experimentation at local level. It provides solutions for integrated territorial development. These integrated strategies are multi-thematic and have to respond to the local needs. They may include housing, with particular attention for social housing, energy efficiency, or focus on cultural heritage, heritage or tourism, on the planning of public spaces. 
Important aspects are capacity building and technical assistance, as well as involving stakeholders at all levels, including citizens, urban planners, and architects' participation. For me, this is key for success. I warmly encourage you to contribute to this bottom-up, local and regional integrated strategies. The new European Bauhaus is not about new or additional money necessarily, but about mobilizing existing resources under various European policies and programs to ensure an effective start of implementation after this initial design phase and the diffusion through mainstream funding resources in the long run. We will, of course, listen very closely at what comes from the design phase to actually shape the instruments in more detail. Above all, we will look at how we can change the mindset within and across the different sectors, support knowledge sharing and learning from peers, learning from each other within the community of people engaged in the transformative movement of the new European Bauhaus. We know now that we will only create a better tomorrow if we are together. Architecture and design and the entire cultural sector have a particular role to play. Who else can better articulate questions and visions for our future living together? Who else can better articulate the pulse of our societies, our aspirations of life and work after the pandemics and the reshaping of our places and our interactions? The cultural and creative sectors have been among the first ones to embrace the new European Bauhaus concept and start contributing to our reflection. And I am particularly pleased that this festival takes place here, even in virtually, in Croatia. For this to be a true grassroots movement, it has to reach every country, every region, every place in Europe, and we hope also globally. I sincerely hope that you, the participants and audience of this year's edition of the Oris Festival, in particular, the women engaging so strongly in this process, will help us create what Europe needs, sustainable and inclusive forms and spaces of living for a better life and a better future, a beautiful, a sustainable, a future where we are all together. Thank you and stay healthy and work hard for our common, better future together. Thank you.